now we're going to look at the uh, binary decision diagram which was invented uh, in 90s and uh, it had a great impact and then later on modern day search solvers came into existence and this technology has a less impact now okay, let's go back to 90s and see the bdd data structure why this was an effective data structure to do sat solving so first let's try to understand what is a binary decision diagram uh, the sat solving using bdd was the first practical sat solver it was this paper which was published in 1992 that uh, marked the rise of bdds uh, that means that somebody demonstrated in particular uh, ken mcmillan that you using pdd data structure you can do large scale uh, sat solving So later on, BDDs were outsmarted by CDCL, and uh, but still we need to to learn about how BDD worked. So let's um, let us define a few things, few definitions, and then we slowly we will build towards defining what is a BDD. Let us suppose you have a partial model M. Partial model M is assigns values to few variables, not all. We can assign meaning to M of F. Right. So uh, we will denote by by f vertical bar m. It means uh, f is projected using the the model m. Let's see what does it mean. So let's suppose if f is a formula, and the model assigns variable p1 to some p2, p3, p5 to some bit values. Let us define is one bit one assignment uh, projection. We assign some variable xi to bi and uh, then how do you project it simply uh, if bi is equal to 1 you replace uh, uh, xi by true and then simplify the formula and then you that is your projection and similarly for 0 you replace uh, that variable by false and then simplify the formula if you have many assignments essentially you, you do this projection one after another for all the variables and then get the simplification we may write projection f projected on p instead of writing p arrow one basic essentially this is a literal i'm writing here similarly i write f projected on not p it's another literal and that means p is assigned to z let's look at an example okay so for for example this formula f okay so if i project on p i have to replace p uh, by true so what that's what uh, that's what this notation says and uh, then we do that then i will replace uh, p by true which we obtain this formula and we simplify this 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 whole thing becomes true and then true and r is uh, decision branch so we have seen that we can project formula on, on partial assignment let's suppose we have a formula f and a variable p that may or may not occur in the formula and then we will pro we project the formula on not p and put it in m1 node and project it on p and then put another node this thing we will say decision branch and uh, somehow it represents this whole object represents the represents the formula f if p is true then what should be the formula and if p is not true then what should be the formula for example uh, in in this case you have uh, this formula if, if p is true it reduced to r if p is false uh, if you put false here then this false or q is q the q and r is projected okay so you get uh, p uh, if you assign to zero then you can get q and r otherwise you can r only so this is what we call decision branch now we can further extend this idea we can turn this to decision tree we will further expand uh, th these objects uh, projected on not p and p until we are left with a true or false at the least in the alternate tree that is called decision tree yeah. which is this looks like as this okay so you have you had this formula 
and first I had to split into these two parts and then we this was Q uh, and R right so what you can do we can split on Q right so so if you set Q to true uh, uh, then you uh, you get uh, R if you set Q to false then you get uh, whole thing becomes immediately false and now you can split R again and then again this single variable then you can simply write false and true now look at this tree this tree uh, seems to be very redundant you know this part of the tree looks exactly the same like this one why don't we uh, merge them together and and take this edge directly coming here this when you do this operation we then it becomes a binary decision diagram so what is a binary decision diagram each internal node is labeled with a propositional variable each internal node has a low low child which we return we will write as a dashed edge and a high child which will write as a solid edge there are exactly two leaves and one is labeled with true and other one is labeled as false so for example to represent this formula we will get the, the, this uh, uh, this decision diagram okay so we what we did we we have a low child you get q then you have a high child r and then q has a high child r and then low child here and then then they all converge to say, false or true then we may ask how can i do start solving using a bdd well it's a very simple idea you take a formula turn it into a binary decision diagram and see if there is a path to true if there is any path to true then your formula is satisfiable otherwise your formula is unsatisfiable now you may be asking the question the translating a a formula into a bdt is it uh, expensive task is, is it cheap or what is the general performance turning a formula into bdt that's the question we will be handling next